Okay, uh, this is an introduction to uh, numerical methods for stochastic differential equations. Uh, this talk is just going to be a very uh, oversimplified version for what will become an extended talk later on. Um, our interest here is specifically the euler mariama method, which is an extension of methods from uh, ordinary differential equations to help us solve some stochastic differential equations. So, of course, there are many numerical methods to solve uh, differential equations. Of course, one of the most famous ones is the uh, various Euler methods, either Euler backward, or of course you have, say, uh, Frank Nicholson or the Runge-Kuda methods, or RK4 specifically. Um, these usually come from either, say, a quadrature or Taylor series expansion and just refinements to uh, give very good approximations uh, to a differential equation solution numerically for when we can't solve them analytically. Um, a lot of these classical methods are usually for uh, deterministic functions. So say for uh, the fusion of heat, uh, your wave equations say, um, lots of fluid dynamics and other dynamical systems. Uh, a lot of these are classically implemented uh, using deterministic functions. But of course, uh, many systems in applications do not uh, behave deterministically, there are, are random elements. Uh, and so a lot of phenomena that we exhibit in, say, nature or even in application, uh, for example, the uh, fluid flow with the case of, say, uh, considering a Brownian motion, for example, or even uh, predator-prey models with some random element due to due an atmosphere, uh, they require a different uh, sort of method. So uh, very briefly, we will uh, dive into a uh, stochastic integration and how we can integrate either random functions with respect to a deterministic variable or even random functions with respect to a random variable. Uh, we will not uh, go into the details. That'll be left to another talk and other works. Uh, we will also develop a scheme to uh, numerically solve some stochastic differential equations. So these are differential equations or general interval equations that are uh, expressed in terms of unknown random functions. And we'll solve a simple example with a known solution. So in order to develop this stochastic integral, we have to begin with some sort of framework. And the framework that most texts uh, usually begin with is the uh, riemann silje integral. So uh, from analysis, we have that a function of bounded variation G where the jumps are controlled, okay? Uh, if we want to look at the integral of f with respect to g, we can define that as a limit in the usual sense, where the integral on the left, we have the integral from a to b of f of x dgx. So now we're integrating with respect to a relatively well-behaved function. That's that function of that bounded variation. And we can express that usu using usual Riemann sums, except now we have uh, jumps in the integrator. So that's the second term that you see here, the v, v uh, xj minus g xj minus 1. And the sum and the limits are in the usual sense where we take the uh, limits as the mesh of that partition, the step size between the tags, that goes to zero. And of course, now uh, when we want to talk about stochastic integration, we want to allow our integrator G to be some sort of random variable. And we select this random variable to be somewhat well behaved. So we will now. Uh, choose our integrator G to be a Brownian motion. Okay, and we're gonna denote that by B sub T. Um, other texts will usually call this the Wiener process and denote that as W T, but nonetheless, still the same. And so we use an appropriate limiting process to replace, say, our function G in the previous by this random function B of T. And so we create this so-called Ito integral where we integrate from A to B, still this function f of t, which is deterministic, and we integrate that with respect to the Brownian motion bt. And in a sense, by being lazy, we can go ahead and uh, write the same sort of limit where now the jumps are with the Brownian motions, okay, evaluated at the tags of our partition over interval a, b. And again, we want to allow this limit to uh, shrink this uh, step size so that we have a continuous time process. Now, while there are some things that we may have skipped over here, for example, does this limit make sense? Uh, how could we do these approximations? Uh, a 
extended treatment can definitely be found in classical texts such as the text by uh, Peter Cloden and uh, Eckhart Flassen, uh, numerical solutions to stochastic differential equations. And I also give a general treatment in a previous talk that I gave at Texas a and for their grad student organization back in 2019. I get, go into a bit more depth on how to construct this integral and how the limiting process is makes sense. The moral of the story is it's basically the same sort of L2 approximation you would do for uh, the Lebesgue integral. So one of our tools that we'll need is the so-called Aitor lemma, which is the primary tool in stochastic calculus. And I will go ahead and just state a short version of the theorem here, where if we have a function of two variables, t and x, that is C2 on this sort of uh, strip. So T is greater than or equal to zero and X is allowed to be any real number. Then if we take a stochastic process that is defined by this new random variable X of T, evaluated the function F with uh, inputs T and BT of Brownian motion, then we can express a derivative in some loose sense here where this derivative, the xt, is interpreted to be the uh, partial of f with respect to t plus half the second derivative in x, that's attached to bt, plus the first x derivative dbt. And this is based off of Taylor expansion, which again can be found in my previous talk. Um, we, this is again a loose sense of the derivative as the Brownian motion and in turn these uh, processes may not be anywhere differentiable. So we interpret this derivative in a new sense. And since we want to work with eventually a differential equation and develop a scheme, we may want to express the integral form of the Aitor lemma, which just says do the same thing, but now integrate over uh, the integral zero to t. And we basically have a form of the fundamental theorem of calculus, where say, xt is now represented as x0, so in the definition, plus the sum of these two integrals, where the first integral here can be interpreted in a Riemann sense, although we have a random integrand, and the second is the Eitel uh, integral, where we now integrate with respect to a Brownian motion. And again, this is just the stochastic variant of the fundamental theorem of calculus. It allows us to solve various uh, stochastic differential equations, and even compute these so-called uh, derivatives. And so this is going to be our primary tool for when we develop the uh, euler maruyama method. Uh, we will pass through the integral and use some naive schemes that we know for deterministic functions and use that to build our numerical scheme to solve stochastic differential equations. So given this stochastic differential equation, so now in general, we have this uh, process, this derivative dxd equals some function u dt plus v d, dbt. And this is again, it can be interpreted to say some sort of total derivative type object. Uh, our main question is, can we find a solution xt or can we numerically approximate it well? And so of course here, the functions u and v will be given in the sense of a problem. And the aim is to mimic the deterministic Euler method, uh, particularly the forward one-step Euler method based on a one-step quadrature. And of course, we can express this as the as an integral equation, but for now, we uh, stick with this formulation for a moment. And as previously mentioned, we want to approximate those integrals by a one-point quadrature. So if we go ahead and express our stochastic differential equation in terms of an integral, and now integrate instead from t to t plus h, where h is taken to be small enough, uh, barring any stability issues, then these integrals can be easily represented uh, using a one-point quadrature where the first integral, we take the value at t, and then we multiply by the step size h. We can do this by the mean value theorem for small enough h. And for the second integral, we do a similar looking thing, except now our jump is going to be in our Brownian motion here, where we take two Brownian motions at t plus h in t. And these Brownian motions, are normal random variables themselves. But a fun thing is that the increment, this difference, is normally distributed with mean zero 
and standard deviation uh, square root, that should say square root h actually, square root h. So this is based off the lag and these increments are independent and normally distributed. And so this creates a iterative method by creating a discretization uh, y of this process x. So we turn this continuous time process x into a discrete time process y, and we aim to see if y can approximate x well, in some sense. So we now have our scheme for the orla mariama method, and it tells us that this stochastic differential equation that we started with before, written in this differential form, and of course, it can equivalently be expressed in the integral form. Okay, so that stochastic differential equation can be numerically approximated by this Markov chain y that we saw on the previous slide, and we do this on some time interval with n equally spaced points. And our scheme is as follows: where, as expected, the next point is just the previous point y, and then plus our scheme here h times u at the previous step plus v times at the previous step multiplied by this random increment. And of course, y0 and x0 are the same initial condition. H's are step size. And this lowercase n ranges from 0 to capital N, where capital N is the number of points in your, our time mesh. So we will solve a particular example uh, and not really give too much uh, detail. The uh, code for this was written in Python. And will be an extension. Uh, will be the basis for a, a future talk. Uh, this example involves the uh, ornstein uhlenbeck process. So we have this stochastic differential equation here: uh, dxt equals theta times mu minus xt dt plus sigma dbt. And here, uh, theta and sigma are positive. They are the drift and volatility constants, respectively. And mu is the mean of xt in the limit. And so this is a process that shows up a lot in uh, biology and mathematical finance, uh, talking a lot of, uh, say, drift volatility. And changing those parameters will uh, change your solution curve. So specifically, we'll consider this specific example here. So we'll choose theta to be 1.3, u to be 1, and sigma to be two, uh, 0.225. And we'll have an initial condition where at time 0, our process uh, with prop, takes the prop uh, value 0 0.5 with probability one. So the good thing is about this equation, we can actually solve it, okay? But uh, for the sake of time, we don't actually show the solution, nor do we uh, derive it. But we can actually plot the uh, uh, different instances of the simulated process, and this is a plot of 20 different sample paths, where of course some of the jumps may be smaller than others, some may be much bigger, and the idea is that the uh, drift, uh, the drift will, will allow each sample path to continue in generally the same direction at approximately the same rate with the volatility introducing the amount of randomness in each jump. And so here we solved it on our domain from zero to five with these 20 different sample paths. And of course, any extension that we can do, we can examine uh, any stability issues uh, what happens if we decrease the step size? Of course, we can look at conditional probability distributions and determine, say, the probability that after a certain threshold, we achieve, say, a value of one or larger. Uh, these analyses will be conducted in a future talk. Of course, one of the most classical, uh, best references that I've found for uh, the subject is the text by uh, Cloden and Blatten, a numerical solution is the Catholic differential equation. And then, of course, I have my previous talk, which uh, dives into the subject in a bit of detail, but not as detailed as the text do. And so for now, we uh, end this excursion on stochastic differential equations. And hopefully uh, for the next talk, we will begin to look at this in a bit more detail and examine some issues of convergence and looking at the distributions of our solutions uh, for given times and see how they compare against the known solutions.